Hi, my name is Gudrun from GE Designs. Welcome to my live quilting chat, Tipsy Tuesday. Hi, everybody. Thank you all for being here on this Tuesday night in November. I appreciate you, whether you're watching on Facebook or on YouTube. And make sure if you're new here to tell us your name by just commenting with your name and where you are tuning in from. It's always fun to see and get to know people. Now on the show tonight, I actually have a book in hand. Yes, it arrived on Friday and we've been shipping it out. So it's exciting to, as I see that some of you that are closer by are get are, it's arriving already. So I'm now the anxiety starts for me. I hope you like it. I hope it's all good. I, th I hope you get inspired by creating things that are in the book. So, um, and I can't wait to see everything that you make. As I mentioned on the last show, I next week we will kick off our little Advent project event, should we say. So I have picked and created four different projects, not necessarily that I've created. These are going to be quick tutorials on fun little things that you can make, gift items or just make for your home, something to keep our hands busy during this Advent season. So we will start next Tipsy Tuesday with our first one. So every Tipsy Tuesday before the four Sundays leading up to Christmas. So I'm excited and... Um, I've been working on some things. So it's it's always fun for me to work on something during this time of year. <clears throat> I will also, of course, try and answer all your questions live. I already got a little bit of a list, an update list. So uh, make sure you just post your questions in the comments on whatever topic. And then, of course, we love it if you use your thumbs up and the hearts for if you're on Facebook and then on YouTube, use the likes button. And if you are newer to our show, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel if you're watching there. Or make sure you follow our page on Facebook, GE Designs. And then if you're on Facebook, if you're not in my group, Gudrun's Quilt Crew, you better get, get your booty on over there because we have lots of fun there. All right, I see lots of folks checking in already. It's getting colder. It's getting darker everywhere. And so winter is coming. Winter is coming, and believe me, we're going to have so much fun this winter. Even though we're probably going to all be a little more isolated than we were, have been these past few weeks. So we just have to be careful. But we all love our sewing rooms, don't we? Whether that's in your living room, your kitchen, or you have your own. And I will try my best to keep you busy and inspired. And hopefully this book will do a little bit of, have, have a little part in that. All right, so of course we have a giveaway every show. So make sure that you comment because we have a live winner every show and then we have a question at the end. So the live winner just gets randomly chosen for um, all your comments, so keep commenting. Keep saying little comments, asking questions. Um, that helps you get a better chance to win. So last show we had a, a, a giveaway and I had a question, so we always have a question at the end too. So if you are not able to watch us live, you still get a chance to win. And um, this is for a $25 gift card to our online store, gequiltdesigns.com. And last show, I asked you, we were a little bit selfish because we wanted some, some inspiration and ideas because uh, we love to play board games and play games. And so I asked you, what was your favorite board game? And our winner this week is our Jeanette Culligan. So Jeanette, congratulations. Her favorite board games are Monopoly and Scrabble. So uh, congrats, Jeanette. And I will, I know who you are, so I will get that gift card to you so you can come shopping um, at the store online. All right, so speaking of the board games, we took some of your advice and your suggestions, and I went ahead and ordered uh, a few games and we tested out one of them this weekend which is a fun one we ordered i invested in a mexican train domino set and so me and mr hp played this weekend it took a full day it's a, you know if you want to play all the rounds it takes a while and uh, but it was really fun 
And I could totally see it being more fun with more people, though. So I, I think this was a, is a keeper, and we will definitely be playing that again. It was a fun Saturday. We kind of split it up between tasks. So who won that again? Hmm. Um, huh? Do you remember? Huh? <laughs> you won. You won. I won. <laughs> but it was a close race. It was close all the way. Like, he... I, I was leading and then he took the lead and he was leading and then his I was kind of chipping at his lead all the way to the last game. So that's how that's how games should be played. So it was it was a, a bloody battle to the end. <laughs> so but we'll definitely be playing that again. So thank you for that suggestion. Always um, love to hear those. So um, yes, book is in the house. I'm so excited and we are working our booties off trying to get the book out to you all these orders out all your pre-orders which by the way i can't thank you enough for your your generosity and and just interest in wanting this book so um just wanted to give you a little bit of an update we have yes yeah, so i have been signing i think i have a permanent indent in my finger from the sharpie but <laughs> i'm good i've been breaking it up so doing about 300 books at a time. And so it's, it's, it's good. And you know what? We can only work as fast as our printers. So we have been printing orders and get trying to pack in orders as fast as we can, as you know, productive as we can. And we are making progress. It didn't seem like it at first, but we are making progress. So um, those of you that are still waiting for that shipment update, uh, we are now today, I think we got to anybody that ordered before November 3rd or 4th, you should have gotten the shipping update. So your book out, went out today. And I promise you, we will try our best. We're working all full day. It's all hands on deck. So our little company, we don't have that many employees, but everybody is packing and shipping books right now. So we are full on trying to get all those books out so hopefully by the end of tomorrow we'll be pretty much caught up i hope so just bear with us show us a little bit of patience <laughs> it's coming it's coming we promise it's coming uh patience is a virtue and then those of you that asked if uh locals when they will they be available in local quilt shops so our distributor shipments went out on Friday. So they should be arriving to distributors. So if your shops order from distributors, then it'll take probably another week or two. But if um, you have a local store, a lot of stores have ordered from us directly. So they already have some inventory already. We've already sent those out. So um, hopefully they'll be arriving really soon and so if you choose to support your local quilt shop if you want to shop from us we appreciate it and uh, you can get your pretty pretty little hands on the pretty little book and so i'm excited to hear from you what you are most excited about which one you're most excited about starting with what you want to make first whether that is a quilt or a cocktail i don't really care but as long as you're inspired maybe by both who knows um so I can't wait to see those fabrics uh, projects posted. And of course, we will be having some sew alongs. You know me, I love sew alongs and I love when you are following along with me. And when the first Stripology Mixology book came out, we did a sew along pretty much right out the gates. And that was our Stella sew along. And then we did another one with two timer. And I think we did a third out of that book. We've done three or four out of the first Mixology book. So. We will be doing sew alongs out of this one. That's for sure. I just have to pick which one. And maybe you can help me out. If there's a very clear majority on what we want to make and I can see some options, then that I, I might let you influence me a little bit. All right. So um, moving on, if you have any questions on the book or shipping or anything like that, we can take that. Everybody's excited watching their mailboxes. <laughs> yeah, and you know what? Give your mail carriers. 
Oh, that's a great idea. Pick that cocktail first, make one, and then you can kind of read through and um, yeah, that will kind of influence your <laughs> your decisions. Yeah, but I wanted to say now that we're leading into this crazy holiday time. Now, most of our carriers have increased their prices. I happily want to say that we are going to keep our flat rate prices on shipping the same, even though our prices, our prices have gone up. But I am hoping that they might drop back down after the holiday season even though they're saying that's not likely but i am not going to raise my prices through the holiday season so they're going to our flat rate shipping prices are going to stay the same so um just know that but give your give <laughs> give your delivery people a little bit of a break um they are working hard i have to tell you our guy that picked up our fedex express orders today and he saw all those books ready to go he was a little <laughs> overwhelmed but you know they're working hard they're trying to get everything to you so it might take an extra day just take a deep breath and they'll they'll get there it'll get there all right so um uh, moving on to the stripping on the side challenge so last show i gave you kind of the final instruction on the different projects that we are kind of focusing in on during this challenge and i totally know that you're not finished yet you shouldn't be this should be a, t a project that takes a longer time if you decide that needs to be your main project that's totally fine too and i've seen many that are kind of getting done or close to being done so i had um an amazing weekend in my sewing room actually and i got lots of sewing time on saturday and lots of sewing time on sunday and i finished some things and two of them were my stripping on the side project. So I not only was able to put them together, of course, when they were together, I'm like, oh, I might as well sandwich them so they're ready for quilting. And then once that, that was done, I'm like, you know what? Let me put my free motion foot on and just get them done. So that's what I did. Um, so my I finished my strip search. I'm gonna show you in the overhead. So this is my strip search. So I decided, I did 12 blocks, so I decided to make it a little bit more rectangular than a long runner because that kind of fits my table better. And then um, the quilting, uh, it was pretty much uh, kind of on the whim decision. It's free motion. It's not very accurate, but I wanted a little bit of motion across the strip, so that's why I did these kind of like waves, wedges in, in each block. Um, you might be able to see it better on the back. So yeah, it's nothing from a book. It's just from my head. But sometimes I just feel like when we have a lot of strip action to go with a little bit of a curve across the strips, just kind of blends it all together better. So this one just needs to be bound and then it is ready for a table. And then the other one I finished was the strip ahoy so again i wanted to make a topper versus a runner so this is a square and um let's see i did what three six nine eleven thirteen of the a blocks and then i think 12 of the b so that was very fun i think that's a great size it's about 20 inches square a little bit over so it was, it's a nice it would be fit nicely on my round table in the middle, kind of like a centerpiece. So again, just needs to be bound. This one I just did uh, loops. And you can see kind of better on the back, just very simple. It took me about 10 minutes to quilt that. That's how I like it. Nice and quick and it's done, right? That's how it goes. And then my last one, my strip off I did using that ghouls fabric so this one i wanted a runner but i wanted it to be wider so i did three rows and it's kind of wide and long so i choose chose to leave out all the kind of white light strips and just use the orange and the black and the gray and the purple and i just love this and the background fabric i chose at first i was thinking white but then Looking at the mummy, <laughs> the mummy has these taupe uh, strips of fabric wrapped around them. So I found this fabric, which I thought was just perfect. So this is the Dash Flow wheat, and it just kind of blends so nicely with it. And it's great because it's not fully white, so it'll look really great on my island because that's white. And so this uh, I thought was just a perfect 
perfect fit. So you don't always have to go totally white. So look for things that are in the other fabrics that kind of speak to you and, and makes it blend better. And you could, I could have even used the white strips because this would have stood out from the white strip. So you could have done that too. But I just thought this looked better with all these rich colors like that. So this one just needs to be quilted and then, yeah, it's pretty long, but that's kind of what I wanted. So that's what, that's the beauty of the stripping on the side. I, I had like the runner done and then I decided, oh, it needs to be wider. So I just made more blocks and not a big deal. You just keep going until you end up with the size that you like. So I hope yours is coming along. And like I said, don't worry. I still have my, a few of my other, like the blocks from, from um, spinning daisies. I'm gonna make some little candle mats from those. So I still have some things to finish. Don't worry, I didn't finish all of my UFOs. Not even close, <laughs> but a few. Uh, one of the things that I also made and finished is the quilt hanging behind me, the flannel Nomi's teen spirit quilt. So this is the one I told you I wanted to make one for my grandson, Johan. And so it's a great size, just nine blocks. And I just love it. It's so fun. It's so cuddly. And I just did a scrappy back using some of the half yards from the bundle. And I, of course, used the plaid uh, from the bundle for my binding. And I still have some leftover. So I was thinking of making a little pillow for him so he could kind of cuddle up. It's a great size to just kind of drag around and he can cuddle up with and maybe take a little nap on a pillow or take in the car um, for our little winter road trip or something so I just love it and it just needs to go and I got it quilted and everything just did straight lines something simple something that I could finish fast because it really doesn't matter for quilts that you know kids are gonna you know run around with and tug along just get them done really that's really what matters so don't worry about it too much so I uh, can't wait to put this in the washer and dryer so it's all scrunched up and cuddly um so any other questions on any of these? Oh, one other thing that I was playing with. There's oh, there's a question. Do you have tips for working with flannel? Um, yeah, sure. So I, I think I did a show on this, but I can throw some things out. So first off, I like a simple pattern. Something that is, you know, bigger pieces is always easier because flannel is thicker. So if you have a lot of uh, seams coming together, it's always going to be more of a challenge with flannel. So don't choose something that comes, you know, you have eight points coming together. It's going to be a nightmare to match up. Just telling you that. And it's from experience. So I always choose a simpler pattern, larger pieces. Um, you might sometimes, if you can choose on your sewing machine, if you can lighten that pressure on the pressure foot, a lot of the newer machines, it's all automated, but it just helps because it's a thicker, when you're sewing them together, it's thicker so that sometimes these tend to slide so um some either e sometimes is even helpful if you feel like your fabric is sliding to use a walking foot um other than that not nothing really i don't pre-wash wash my flannel i like to just wash it as it's all done in a quilt because it, it does shrink a little bit more than regular cotton so it will shrink up that's why i always put flannel on the back and if i'm going to put something else on the back like minky I may wash my flannel or um, actually Minky's fine, but Minky doesn't shrink. That's the one thing. So it might get a little more scrunched up on the front if you're going to use Minky on the back. Um, it, is, it gets a little bit heavier too. It's heavier because it's just thicker. So um, keep that in mind. Otherwise, you know, they're so warm and cuddly and cozy. Love working with flannel. Are you going to show us the machine embroidery? That's the one thing I was, I almost forgot. So I played for the first time. I did some embroidery on my new Solaris. Well, is it new anymore? <laughs> I got it. I got it this year. So kind of, but I just had not had the time to play with embroidery and kind of being a little scared. And so from, from the comments that I saw from you, I posted a little video on Facebook this weekend, just cause I was so excited to be playing with it. And from the comments, a lot of you tend to have machine embroidery machines and have never really do dove into it and I could totally see this being kind of like a black hole because it's really fun and interesting what you can do with it so I just tried a couple of things and these may or may not become something that will 
talk about later in future episodes. But I started with this just little beautiful ornament. And um, so one of the things when you when you are so you I, I obviously just put tear away on the back. But then if you are and I use this uh, kind of a woven fabric. So it's kind of similar to our peppered cottons, which kind of has a little bit of a texture. I love that look. And so I, of course, since I'm not really stocked up on embroidery thread, you want to use what I've heard, rayon or polyester thread for embroidery, different type of um, thread than regular piecing for, for quilting. So I didn't have a whole lot of inventory on colors, which I do need to improve on. But I just, you know, want to encourage you, don't be afraid. If you just have a few, swap out the colors. So this ornament was totally different colors. I just pulled colors that I had and you know, you swap them out. You can just choose your own. So that was really fun. This was by scissor tail stitches and I could post, post photos or post links. If you're interested in this, this was a kind of a pack with all kinds of different ornaments. And what I love about my embroidery machine, I can make that I can kind of adjust the size of the, of the embroidery motifs. To my liking so I tried that and then I had to try something else so of course um, me being me <laughs> I saw this and I just had to try this so this one was totally different colors because it was all done in like you know kind of burgundy reds and purple but I'm like you know what I want rosé in my wine glasses <laughs> so I I wanted to use pink and then I just used these grays so you can totally change the color of the thread. So if you don't like exactly something, just put different thread color and it'll be totally different and fun. So that was really great. I will definitely be playing with this some more. And if you're interested, we could do, you could learn alongside me if you wanted to. So um, just tell me in the comments and I'll probably, I'll, I'll do some more, you know, kind of take you on a journey with me as I learn this and, and figure this out. And if you want, you know, links to these, I think, I believe this one was a OEST embroidery design that I just bought online and, and downloaded it. So very simple, very, nice, very nice. When you have that impulse, you can just download it and be, be, be good. Oh, what's the difference between a runner and a topper? So we call it a runner when it's a long table runner, kind of a, a length of a table or, you know, long and skinny. A topper is usually when it's just uh, either square or round. So it's like even on most sides. So table topper, I don't know. That's kind of how I understand the two different words for a table runner, table topper, table quilt. Both of them are table quilts. <laughs> um, that's kind of, yeah, I don't know. All right, any other questions from from folks? We have, um, do you have the magnetic hoop for your machine? Yes, I do. I do have one. I don't have the brand new, the Baby Lock just came out with a new magnetic hoop. I haven't ordered that yet, but I've heard it's fabulous. But I do have the dime magnetic hoop. So when I'm doing quilting in the hoop, um, that's what I use. And it's it's really good. It's really nice. And uh, even though I don't really know what I'm doing, but it works well for me. <laughs> works well for me. Um, I And I did show you the other day. Did I show you? No, I didn't show you yet. Oh, I have to bring it home because it's at the headquarters. It's a little, the Alberta table topper. I finished that too. And I quilted that in the hoop. And so I'll bring that and show you next week. But Fast and Furious Club is, of course, we have the November project coming up this Friday. November 20th, so the 20th of each month, we have a new project and we have the Santa hat placemats coming up on Friday. And I know there's been a lot of anticipation because a lot of you want to make those and get them done before Christmas. Believe me, you will. They're easy and fast because everything in Fast and Furious Club is quilt as you go. And so um, a lot of you wanted to get your hands on that kit. And we all, of course, had a limited number and I've gotten so many questions about what fabric, what gray fabric I used for the background. So I just thought we would take a, a, a little bit closer look at the placemat. So if you wanted to try and find your own similar fabrics. So what you need for this is 
the background fabric you need the most of that and then you need two reds for the hats and one of them you'll be using on the outside and then you need a stripe fabric for your candy canes and that could be any kind of stripe and um but i you don't necessarily need to find a diagonal stripe this is actually just a regular stripe because i show you how to cut it on the diagonal and if you happen to have diagonal stripe then you just cut straight strips but i will show you all of that in the video the gray is a grunge and it's it's the number um the name of it is stiletto medium gray now of course when we did all our kits we cleaned them out <laughs> we cleaned moda out of it and i believe that it's being reprinted and it should be coming in stock anytime now but i thought since a lot of you have asked if there's anything that's similar so what I liked about this gray, it's uh, very warm, so it has a lot of kind of a brownish, greenish tones, tones to it. A lot of, Gray is just not just one color, I swear. Gray has all these different dimensions. So I pulled a couple other grunges just to show you the difference. So this is the lead, grunge lead. And look how uh, it's darker, obviously, but it has a lot more blue in it. And then this is smoke. It's lighter but it also has much a much cooler feel than this one. It's this one has a lot of like green and brownish tones in it. So it's just so interesting how a gray can be so different. Like I said, there's way more than 50 shades of gray in the world. There's hundreds and thousands. A uh, couple other fabrics that I found that are very similar that we have in our one yards. If you wanted some more texture, this Stormy Sea is probably the closest gray that I found to this gray. And actually, this one would be very exciting to use if you wanted it to be have even more of a holiday feel because it's almost like poinsettias. Poinsettias, uh, the pattern in here is these floral elements. So it would, have, it would have a lot more movement than just the grunge, but it would be kind of gorgeous for the holidays. So this is... Um, Floral Element Stormy Sea, and this is by Art Gallery. Gorgeous feel. These fabrics are so awesome to work with. Peppered so, uh, peppered cottons would definitely work. That peppered cottons are a solid color, so they would not have the variety. Um, the other one that I found that we just got in is the Spotted Quotation Graphite. Now it's even got a little more yellowish greenish hue to this gray, but it's still closer to this than the bluish grays. So it just depends what kind of feel you want. Um, I think this one's really pretty because it's got the black spots and the white spots in it. So those could be great options if you're looking for something to replace, um, to make something similar than this. Now you're speaking of, speaking of, um, peppered cotton. So peppered cottons will be, you'll just have that kind of um, homespun looks, but it's one color. So it's not going to have the variation of like a grunge or a tone on tone, but totally, if you want it, that look, that'll be really cool to work with as well. What is the white? Oh, this white. Uh, this is, I actually use just a piece of flannel. It's actually kind of a natural color, almost a cream. Uh, cause I wanted a little more texture for my cuff and my pom pom. So it's just, just, yeah, just flannel. So that's what we include in our kit. You can use any white color for that or any fabric, but, um, that worked out well. And I, I liked to use just the same binding as my background cause it kind of helps bring out the pattern I thought and, uh, makes that little border kind of shine. So this will be coming into your account if you purchased Fast and Furious Club on Friday, early morning Friday. So can't wait to meet up with you for uh, Facebook Friday or for our Happy Friday show on Friday, 3 p.m. Central, and see if it got delivered. But since we are on this little topic of Fast and Furious, Quilt As You Go, and I just mentioned that next week we're going to kick off our Advent projects, that I thought we could do a little recap. So two years ago, I did a, a tutorial. Oh, I like to do these little things in, in kind of the, during the holiday season. And it was these little mini stockings. So scrappy mini stockings. And they are done quilt as you go, just with some leftover scrap one and a half inch strips. So if you still have some stripping on the side strips that you haven't used up, these are perfect little projects. And so I did a tutorial video 
that has been on YouTube, but though since we have so many new viewers, I thought we could kind of warm up for all the four new projects coming up in the next few weeks by watching this video together. It will also give you a little kind of a um, inside look on how to do Quilt As You Go if you're intrigued by Fast and Furious Club. So why don't we just check it out and I'll meet you back here in a few minutes. Hi, I'm Gudrun from GE Designs and I want to show you a really quick tutorial for a really adorable stocking, actually a little mini stocking that you can make for the holidays. Really quick with a quilt as you go method and this is something you can make quickly for a little gift, hostess gift, you can even put gift cards in there, something really fun and easy to do. So let's get started and I'll show you how what you will need to make the stocking. First of all I want you to go to the website gequiltdesigns.com. You need to print out the pattern. It will include the outline of the stocking plus some fabric requirements and instructions. So what you will need for the stocking is strips in various lengths, one and a half inch strips. I just took some of my strips, one and a half inch strips from my collection and did kind of all in these neutrals with a little bit of gold accent. You can of course just cut them up. Um, these were all cut with a stripology ruler. Then you will need two pieces of lining that are eight by 10. And you'll also need a piece of batting, the same size, eight by 10, and a piece of the backing fabric that is eight by 10, which is, uh, you can have any, any fabric you want. 8 by 10 as well. Then you will need the cuff fabric, which you will be cut, cutting at 5.5 by 8.5. And, and then you'll need a, a little strip of uh, ribbon, about 6 inches, for the hang tag. And that is all you need. And we're going to be doing this quilt as you go. So the first thing we're going to do is take our batting. I am using a fusible batting from Bozal that is fusible on one side. So I'm going to take one of my lining pieces and layer that on top of the fusible side so the right side is up on the lining. Just align that and when he, whenever I'm ironing these, fusing these together, I like to use steam and my iron actually has two settings for steam so I can have some extra steam to get these fused together really quickly and it will hold very well. like so. Now we're ready to start piecing our stocking and I like to actually draw an outline before I start. So you want to take that outline that you printed out of the stocking and cut it out and then you just want to place that on on the batting side like so and just draw a rough outline. Now this needs does not need to be accurate because we're going to be trimming that and, and trim and drawing that all up again. So I just like to make kind of an outline like this so that I know kind of how long my strips are going to need to be and I'm not wasting a whole lot of fabric piecing the whole backing. So this is all you need and then we just take our strips and not, they don't need to be cut to size because we're just going to cut them with scissors as we go. So I just take the first piece and I want to lay them kind of, I don't want them to be straight so I want it to be have a little bit of an angle to it. So the first strip, for example, I would lay like this. And what I want to do, I lay it right side up, making sure that the edges or the end of the strip is extending those drawn lines on both sides. So like that, let me just, and then I just take scissors and make sure here's my line. So I'm going to go a little bit outside of that, like so. And that is my first piece. And then I'm going to take another, piece of fabric for the second piece that's going to be coming above this one. So when I'm figuring out the size of this one, you always want to lay it how it's going to end up after you sew it. So this is how it's going to end up. So I want to make sure that this end sticks outside of those lines and then it's going to extend these lines on that side. So this is the length I need for this piece. And now I'm ready to fold it over and I'm going to sew this side. I like to put, use pins when I'm doing quilt as you go because things will move. 
best thing is to use a walking foot for your machine. I do not have a machine showing with me here that has a walking foot. However, it is a Singer 301, so they're very powerful machines and will kind of work through anything. So I'm gonna see how that works with this project. And you just wanna use uh, an approximate quarter inch seam. It's not really, does not really need to be that accurate because we're just trimming that to size. So now when I get to the end, I just want to cut my threads. I want to pull this out and cut my threads. And then I want to just fold this piece over. And you can finger press. I like to push it out with my fingers first. And if it's not laying flat, you can always take that iron and put it on it lightly. You don't want to over iron when you have the batting there because that could kind of irritate your batting. Um, now I'm going to just take the next piece and whatever fabric. Again, I measure it to which way I'm, it's going to end up and cut and fold that over. It's going to be on that side and I can actually fit my other piece on the bottom side too because um, we can sew them both at the same time. So fit it, fold it over and then we can sew each side. And just keep going this way, um, just stitch and flip until you've filled and kind of covered that whole outline of the stocking. So once that is done, you would actually have a unit that looks like this. After you've filled all of your stocking outline with strips. And so now it's time to take the other piece of lining. So this is your back but it's actually gonna be the inside of your stocking. So I'm gonna take the other lining and make sure it's right sides together with the backing side, like that. I'm just gonna flip it over. And now I'm gonna take that stocking template and lay that on top of the sewn piece. And now I wanna align it, so make sure that it's catching the strips everywhere and now I want to draw that outline again with my pen. And once I have that drawn, I'm just going to cut it out with my scissors. But I want to cut all of the layers. So both the top that is sewn in with the inside lining and then also that other piece of lining that I just placed on the bottom. So before I cut this, I'm actually going to make sure it sure to pin it together so it all holds together in a few places so now I can just cut everything and no need to be kind of cutting all those pieces before you start sewing we just do it all at the same time so cut on the line So now we have it cut out and I'm just going to trim this and now the next step is to take our backing. So now I have it cut out just like this and I actually took my backing piece and I laid that on the front of the stocking. So this is the front of the stocking. Let me just show you here and I lay my backing piece on top it's going to be the 8 by 10 so I just align it at the top make sure I pin it really well through all the layers because now you have two layers of lining the batting the front of the stocking and now the back of the stocking and again I just like to use the outline of this to sew with instead of cutting everything out to begin with so now I'm just going to sew with a quarter inch seam all the way around here
So now just what I'm going to do is cut all the way around to trim that backing to the same size as the front I'm using a scissors. And then what I also like to do before I turn everything is kind of snip the corners and and cut little V's into the rounded parts. It will help it will help once you turn it those um, units to, to round nicely. And what that what I mean by that is for example in the toe just to cut little V's into the seam like this. Just making sure I don't hit my seam. I'm staying away from my seam but cutting these little V's really helps once you turn your unit. And everything will kind of round very easily. You can also just cut little slits like this. Just making sure you don't go even close to that seam because that's gonna not gonna be good. So that looks good. So now I'm ready to turn it around. So what you want to do here is you're gonna go in between the backing and then the front piece. Over on the other side we have the two linings but you want to go between the backing and the, the patchwork portion and turn the stocking right side out. It's a little bit harder with a smaller stocking like this. I have a pattern in my Fast and Furious holiday book that is the full size stocking using a similar method, but I just love that I don't have to kind of you know cut everything out beforehand I can just kind of wing it and then this will give me a really finished inside with no raw edges anywhere so now it's turned so I got the back on this side but now I can go ahead and go between my lining pieces so then you will have two layers you have the backing fabric and a lining on one side and you have the lining and the batting and the front here I'm just going to use a little tool to push out my corners and round that heel out and the toe. And now I'm ready to just give it a good press. And it's good to have a little bit of steam. I will just make that stocking nice and flat. And now the next step is just to put the cuff on and that's really, really easy. Takes care of that raw edge on the top really nicely. So we take our cuff fabric, we're going to fold it along the long side and we're going to sew together with a quarter inch seam. So it looks like this with that seam on the quarter inch side. We're going to go ahead and press that seam open. So you want to make sure you press it open. So just open it up, give it a press, and well, let me just show how you can do that with your iron. And now we're going to fold it right side out in half. So you're going to fold it just aligning the seams in half. And then give it a press. So we're going to fold it up and give it a press, making that seam be in kind of in the middle on one side. So you will have a folded edge on one side. You have created this little loop thing, uh, folded edge on one side and the raw edges are all on the same side, seam right along the back. Give that a press this way. Then we're gonna take our hang tag and just fold it in half, raw edges together. And first and foremost, we wanna place that on the inside of the stocking because that is going to be in the seam and you want that to be on uh, that corner. So I'm just going to pin it right in here and grab a pin for that. And then I'm going to place my cuff so that the raw edges are on the top. I'm going to place that on inside my stocking too, making sure that that seam 
is on the back side. Let's do that. That'll be better. So then we kind of go inside it and open it up. Open it up like this. And we're going to pin all four sides. Just put a few pins. We can just align this pin and use it again. And now we're just going to sew that seam. That's a little bit tricky with such a small opening. If you've sewn garments before, I'm sure it's not a big deal. It's a little harder because we've got the thickness of the, of the batting in there. But it's still fairly simple. So I'm there we are. And all we is nest, what is left to do now is pulling that cuff up and then folding it over the raw edges of the stocking. Like so. And then pulling that little hang tag out. And that is all she wrote. We'll end with giving this cuff a little bit of a press. And that is it. We're ready with our little mini stocking to hang on the Christmas tree, on the mantle, on a little cupboard or whatever, or to give away as little gifts. So I hope you enjoyed. I'll see you next time. So I hope you enjoyed that little tutorial. And so where to find the the actual pattern go to my website under shop and you find the free patterns tab that's where you have that mini stocking the outline of the mini stocking to print out or you can just you purchase that pattern you put it in your cart but it's zero dollars so you go through the whole checkout and then it's in your account but there's also a, a full size stocking so it's done the same way i just use two and a half inch strips and then it's done exactly the same way as this one. You can use any size strips or anything like that, but you have the outline of the big stocking too. So it's all free on the website, so go check it out. And of course, this video, the stocking video, you can find on my YouTube channel. If you just wanted to watch it again on its own, it's all found on my YouTube channel. We just wanted to do a little review because we have so many viewers and to get you all excited about these fun little projects coming up in the next few weeks, next four weeks. So I saw a few questions. There was a question about my iron. I um, use the Reliable Velocity Irons, which I carry in my store. They've just been out of stock for a long time because the manufacturer is out of stock. But I hear that they're coming in towards the end of the month. So hopefully if um, anybody wants Santa to bring them one, that's a great one. It's a really great one. And a tool I haven't seen before. Which one was that? Was that my turning tool? I don't, I don't remember what, what tool I showed. <laughs> oh, to push out the seams. Yeah, it's, um, no, I don't remember what it's called, but it's like a, <laughs> it's a blue stick. It's a blue <laughs> stick thing. <laughs> it's a blue thing with a kind of a tapered end so you can kind of push out those seams with it. It's, it's nice and it's you can actually iron on top of it so it's heat resistant as well i have to find this because i do need to carry it in my store because i've been asked about this tool so many times so um so only the front side of the stocking is quilted so yes so only the front side is quilted it is fully lined so the back side has two layers of of fabric you could put batting there too but it just you know usually we don't even look at if the stockings are hanging we don't even look at them so it, I really feel it's much easier to sew something that has only a quilt at one side and it's just fewer layers of fabric. So yeah, mine are only quilted on the front side, but a really easy, fast way to get a stocking that's fully lined and no raw edges anywhere except underneath the cuff. Um, can you cut it out with pink and shears and not have to clip the curves? Yes, totally can if you want to. I am just... I have had accidents where I clip the seams with those scissors. So I just like to do my seam and, and clip with little, little, just where I need on those curves. Will some Christmas plaids work on the socks? Oh yeah, that'd be beautiful. I think anything, anything will work. You could do wider strips. You could do any size. You could do thinner strips, little scraps. You could do salvages. I saw somebody mentioning that. That'd be so cute. So anything you, 
you can you can do with these. It's really just a basic template and then you just fill it in with whatever fabric you want. You could do single fabric and just quilt it and then um, put the cuff on and, and voila, there it is. Hold it Precision Stiletto by Clover. I, I think it, I believe it is by Clover, but I have to confirm. Thank you. Thank you, Wendy. I will check on it and, and confirm that that's what it is. <laughs> it's just my blue stick tool. <laughs> That's my term for it. My blue stick tool. I'm bad. I'm sorry. I'm really bad. <clears throat> Any other questions on this? Um, oh, one of the questions that I did see a few times is when we are announcing the next three projects for trimester two of Fast and Furious Club. That will be our December project, our January project, and February. So we release them all. We show them all at the same time, and then they will come out in those months, always on the 20th of the month. And our release show will be December 1st. December 1st, you get to see the next three projects in Fast and Furious Club. So, yes, countdown. Watch for December 1st, Tipsy Tuesday. I have been working on these projects, and I'm very excited to share them. They are really awesome. <laughs> really awesome. That was a 301, yes. My Singer 301 Vintage. I have a few of them. I love them so much. That's the machine I used to travel with when I when traveling was okay. So that one I put in my carry-on and took with me when I was traveling to places where I had to stay for a long time. So I could sew in my, sew in my hotel room. And I still have one set up in my house. I have one set up at the headquarters. And a couple more over there, and I love them. They are really great, just straight stitch machines, really fast, beautiful stitch, just a, a dream to sew on if you're piecing. Um, all right, so moving on, um, if you don't, we don't have any more questions on the little stockings, like I said, you can go back and watch it. I just have a few things. You know, we've been so busy at, at uh, G Designs headquarters shipping books that fabric has been sitting and not being cut yet so we i don't really have much new to show you but i did show you a new bundle on friday it was this at avignon by um blank fabrics and this is um so pretty so it's like these big big poppies i gotta show you the big print so big big poppies um the colorway is very rich and warm tones isn't this gorgeous and then we have paisleys and these beautiful reds um, we have a coordinating print a small print and then we have these browns so the poppies are in the brown too Ch nice chocolatey warm brown and then um, the coordinates just a hint of that turquoise and this is a small bundle so only nine prints and look at that my favorite diagonal diagonal stripe for all those bindings and and sashings and things like that so this is just gorgeous and I, it's a, it's such an easy line to throw other things in you could totally throw in some tone on tones like orangey reds you can throw in some turquoise a little bit of that olive green you could throw that in and just you know or just work with it as it is it's beautiful nicely balanced nine pieces um, and then the other one I just want to show you in the in the pack we got sea botanica that we had like a few weeks ago we got a restock of it because it sold out really fast so we have a restock of the sea botanica bundle so those are the two new bundles we did get a little bit of uh, one yards restocks in and we got some more new colors of the peppered cotton so here you see the peppered cottons they have a really nice sheen so you can kind of see, um, I don't know if you can see the texture or the, the sheen of them. So this is a, a nice, really nice green called Jungle. This is called Ink, the blue. And we have Aubergine. And then we have Deep Space, which is their black. So a really nice hue of black. Not total, total black, but really, really nice. So those are brand new colors of pepper cottons. And we are hopefully getting more in. And then one more print that I wanted to show you that's brand new. It's a stripe. A rainbow stripe. It's called the pavilion stripe. So we'll be carrying a lot more stripes and plaids that are coming in that I've been ordering because I think it's really great to be able to buy one yards of all kinds of stripes and plaids because I love to use it for bindings. I love to use it for sashings and things like that. So uh, whenever I say unique stripe or plaid and let alone diagonal plaids, I'm going to be purchasing those for all of our one yards. So 
I'm excited about that. Going into these next few months in the new year, all of all the fabric sets on order. But um, question about the batting. Uh, what batting did you use in the Team Spirit flannel? I used just a soft a poly flannel, a uh, poly batting. I think it was a bolso. I, I used a bolso for this one. Just a, a nice thin, it's light because it's ba uh, uh, flannel on both sides, so I didn't want it to get too heavy. So it's it's nice. You could use anything you want. Of course, you can use cotton. Cotton is going to be heavier. Um, and, but you know, it's going to behave like cotton. And then I have done actually flannel quilts using wool batting. That one, that particular quilt is really warm, but it's very nice. It's wool batting. It's really, um, soft too. And just beautiful thing to work with as well. Um, all right. I have a question from Bonnie. Hi, Bonnie. Any idea of ETA for the Tim Holtz? abandoned uh we don't have a ship date yet but i've heard that it's coming in so we're hoping we uh our first shipment we might get two shipments of it because uh we have ordered a lot but we are hoping that we should be seeing a shipping announcement any day now so hoping we will have some tim holtz to sew on over the holidays <clears throat> Um, uh, Lynn asks, when using stripes for binding, are you supposed to cut on the bias? You're not supposed to do any, anything unless you want to. So no need unless you have a, if you have a straight stripe like this and you would like it to be diagonal on your binding, then you cut it on the bias or in your, or in your, whatever you want to do. If you wanted to have that diagonal. Now, if you find fabric that is already diagonal, then you can just cut it straight to get that look. But there's no nothing that tells you that you should always cut your binding on the bias. I personally do not, not cut my bias, cut binding on the bias unless I want a particular look or if I'm doing rounded edges, then you really need a bias cut binding. But for regular straight binding, if the fabric, the pattern is okay cutting straight, I always cut on the straighter grain. All right. Um, yeah, that's the one I just answered. <laughs> so uh, we have a live winner. Ready, Mr. HP? Let's find our winner. Tonight's winner, live winner. Thank you for sticking with us. I know that many of you might have seen that tutorial before, but um, thank you for sticking around. And you might get rewarded. Brenda gets rewarded. Brenda Fedora is our... Live winner, you get a $25 gift card to the GE store, geequiltdesigns.com. So we will try and get a hold of you. If you see this, send us a quick email or a message, and we will get that to you as fast as we can. Um, all right, so Heidi has a question. Let's answer, the, answer this one. Is there a tutorial to do stripes for binding? Do you have to do anything different than usual? Nope, just like I said, if your stripe is, um, let me open this one up and just show you guys. So this one is just, so most times when you get a, buy a stripe, stripe fabric, it's the stripes run the, uh, the length of, so along the selvages, so the length of the fabric. And so then when you're cutting strips from, uh, from fabric like this, when you're cutting strips, you cut them across the width. So then your strip will have all these stripes. And this one in particular will have all these different colors. Um, so your, your binding will have all of that going this way. So it's all about like, look at your stripe, which direction is it going? How do you want it? Which, you know, alignment do you want in the quilt? Is it sashing? Um, so usually when I'm doing sashing, I want the stripe to go the short way. Unless I'm doing something different, I'd like I'm go, <laughs> going the long way. I, it's just all about, that's why it's so fun to play with stripes because you can orient it differently within the quilt. Now for bindings, it just adds so much movement, I feel like. And so sometimes that diagonal around the edge, it just acts like kind of like a little candy coating around the edge of a quilt. It's just fun and you can use it to tie in all the colors of the quilt. So nothing in particular. So uh, if you're interested in, in learning about how to cut things on the bias, I do have a tutorial using the Excel ruler to cut bias binding, uh, the stripology ruler. So you can check that out on my YouTube channel on the website. But we're going to finish it off with a question. 
So another question, another thing we like to do, like to do during this time that we're entering into the holiday season is watch movies. And so uh, our question for you tonight is what is your favorite holiday movie? I have a few that we watch every year. I mean, Home Alone. My kids grew up watching Home Alone, so we have to watch that all the time. What is your favorite holiday movie, Mr. Ho Mr. Honey? Oh. <laughs> I I love Elf though. Elf is my favorite. Black and Star. Oh, Miracle, Miracle on Thirty Fourth Street. That's a classic. Yeah, it is. Um, so I like that. And then you know some. I love some of those yeah, sappy. No, we didn't grow up with that one, so that one's I not a favorite. Me. Yeah, okay. I didn't grow up with that one. <sighs> yeah, no, not we didn't have that one either. <laughs> oh, you're trying to sing in an Icelandic? Okay, say that again. Yeah. So he's trying to say what Frosty the Snowman is in Icelandic. Yeah. Do it again. <laughs> it's a tongue twister. Snifinur snjokall. Try that. Say that five times fast. <laughs> All right. So, uh, oh, that's another great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're going to have to write this down. All right. So thank you all for all your suggestions. But one of you lucky uh, commenters will win on our next show. We'll announce the winner next show. And our next show will be November 24th next week. So for if you're in the U.S., that's Thanksgiving week. And can't wait. We'll do our first little Advent project on the 24th. So make sure to tune in and 7 p.m. Central, same time. And then, of course, I'll be live this coming Friday at 3 p.m. Central time for my Happy Friday show. So I hope to see you then. Until then, stay safe. Keep that mask on. Stay warm if you're in the northern part of the world. And I will see you next week. Mm -hmm.